Donald Trump's election, a boon to the fringe movement known as the alt-right. CNN's Tom Foreman has the story. Tom? Hey, Don, for some of the people who are most concerned about Donald Trump's election, it really comes down to one term, alt-right. We just won the lottery. We just stole America back. Loud, assertive, often shocking, and never apologetic. The alt-right movement has been hugely energized by the election of Donald Trump. It's now time for the return of men. Alt-right stands for alternative right, and it refers to people who think traditional political conservatives are too timid, too tame, too accepting of the status quo, unwilling to engage uncomfortable topics like what they call racism against white people. And that happens all the time to white people in black neighborhoods. They don't just get uncomfortable, they get screamed at. What the f are you doing in this neighborhood? Get out of here! But the fact is, there's a demographic struggle going on. And it's real, and I think we should be real about it. That's Richard Spencer, who coined the term alt-right. In a fate worse than death. His website features a slick video urging white people to defend America against multiculturalism. It's a country for everyone, and thus a country for no one. It's a country in which we ourselves have become strangers. The Breitbart website, which has been tied to the alt-right movement, suggests alt-right adherents are mostly white, mostly male, middle American radicals who are unapologetically embracing a new identity politics that prioritizes the interest of their own demographic. So when other Americans protest the election results, the alt-right sees more of what they've seen all along, an ocean of enemies of white men. And the movement never hesitates to attack its foes, whether African-American, Latino, feminist. Is radical feminism a refuge for fat, ugly women who can't attract high-value men? The stereotype generally holds true because they look like swamp donkeys. Only a tiny slice of Trump voters would likely call themselves alt-right, but many share the desire to disrupt I Washington. I love that voting him in is really sticking it to the establishment. And for the alt-right, that matters more than the man. This is about a movement. It's not about a demagogue. It's not about Donald Trump. It's about reinvigorating the American dream. It's about ultimately saving Western civilization. All of this is very disturbing for many people in the rest of the political spectrum, and that's the catch. The more they are upset, the more the alt-right celebrates. Don? Tom Foreman, thank you very much. I want to bring in now senior political commentator Peter Beinert, contributor to The Atlantic, Liz Burney, director of special projects for the Zionist Organization of America, senior political commentator Matt Lewis, senior contributor to The Daily Caller, and Richard Cohen, the president of the Southern Poverty Law Center. It's so good to have all of you here. Matt, I need to start with you because, you know, you have raised concerns about the alt-right movement going mainstream on this show before. I think you were one of the first people to raise it. And yet you say that maybe it's not a bad idea to have Steve Bannon in the West Wing. Explain your, your thinking for me. Right. So first of all, I think it's fair to say not only am I one of the first people to talk about the alt-right here and warn about them, I'm probably um, the person on this panel that they hate the most, arguably, um, because their big problem are conservatives who are not with their program. Um, so, you know, that's sort of where I come from. Having said that, you know, I've known Steve Bannon for five or six years. Like we don't we don't like go to movies together on weekends or go golfing or anything, but I've known him. I think some of the concerns about Breitbart, um, not my favorite site. I think some of the concerns are overwrought. I think Steve Bannon is a, a very energetic, brilliant, and eccentric person. Um, I would not want him to be the sole advisor of my president. Uh, however, uh, I think that, you know, with a, a panel of people uh, whispering in his ear, including Ryan Priebus and Mike Pence and Kellyanne Conway, I think it would be perfectly fine to have Steve Bannon, this eccentric, outside-the-box thinker, helping him strategize. Richard, the Southern Poverty Law Center takes a different view of that. What's your biggest concern about having someone like Steve Bannon or Steve Bannon himself advising Donald Trump? 
Well, look, I think it makes a mockery of Mr. Trump's first pledge to the American public that he was going to bind the wounds of division. Uh, Bannon has provided a platform for misogyny, for racism, for xenophobia, for anti-Semitism. He's fanned the flames of division. I think he shouldn't be in the White House. It's, 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 it's disheartening that Mr. Trump would bring him there. All right, everyone stay with me. We're going to talk more about Steve Bannon's role in the Trump administration next. Don't go anywhere. Steve Bannon, the former head of Breitbart News, will be one of President Donald Trump's key advisors. Back with me now, Peter Beiner, Liz Burney, Matt Lewis, and Richard Cohen. Liz, I want to start with you because I interviewed uh, Joel Pollack, who's Breitbart's editor-at-large last night, and he defended Steve Bannon's appointment. And he pointed to the support of your pro-Israel organization as proof that Bannon isn't anti-Semitic. What are people getting wrong about Steve Bannon? Well, I think so, of so many people who kn actually know Steve Bannon and including people that we know, have said that he is a very decent uh, person. And from what we, he ha actually helped uh, in our uh, difficulties with CUNY, with the anti-Semitic um, protests at CUNY. He was contact, his, the Breitbart people were instructed by him to contact Governor Cuomo to see that New York State would do something about this. Um, we've also analyzed uh, the articles that he has in Breitbart, and so many of them have been pro-Israel. Uh, he, uh, j just this week, he wrote an article talking about the pain of a Jewish student uh, who found a swastika uh, on, on, her, on her doorway. Um, this is not something that an anti-Semite would write about. Uh, he's talked about problems with the Iran deal where many people were criticizing Netanyahu. He made sure to have a broadcast of Netanyahu's full webcast uh, about the problems with the Iran deal. Uh, also this week, he had another article on Breitbart about uh, the recent uh, violations of the Iran deal. He's somebody who has been really so me, fighting, fighting for the pro-Israel and, and so none of the other things and, bother you because he's so pro-Israel. Uh, it's, it's, we're also talking about anti-Semitism here, and 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 I, and I think a lot of the other things. It's very painful to see somebody smeared. Uh, who, who doesn't deserve it and who's a fine human being. Okay. Um, and, you know, I, I, we've read through his alt, the, the uh, article about the alt-right, and it's a piece of reporting. It's not, it's not, a, it's not an endorsement of the, of, of the alt-right. <laughs> okay, who is that? I is that Richard? Yeah, I got to jump Go in. Ahead. Look, <clears throat> the ADL, the leading organization fighting anti-Semitism, has condemned Mr. Uh, Bannon's appointment. Mr. Bannon has said that Breitbart is the platform for the alt-right. It's something, he's proud of it. The alt-right is basically rebranding white supremacy for the digital age. I don't know what Mr. Bannon does in his personal life. Maybe he seems like a good guy to his friends. All I know is what he's done in his public life, and that is to spread white nationalism and white supremacy. Right, and I think it's, it's important to, to recognize mm -hmm. that um, that uh, a major target of Breitbart uh, has been Muslims, right? To headlines like, um, uh, man bites dog, Muslim nice to non-Muslim, right? Talking about how Muslims devastate communities, about how they're taking time bomb, right? And so it's not surprising that the Zionist Organization for America, which is itself a bigoted organization against Muslims, which condemned President Obama in February when he called Islam a religion of peace. The ZOA, which has had Pamela Geller, who's called Muslim savages, who's, who's had her speak, who's had Frank Gaffney, who called Barack Obama the first Muslim president. It's not surprising that the ZOA, which is also Islamophobic, would endorse Steve Bannon's Islamophobia. The Southern Poverty Law Center, the Anti-Defamation League, the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism, the Council of American Islamic Relations all oppose Bannon. Those are organizations there. These are some of the headlines that Peter mentioned here. Uh, Breitbart headlines, hoisted high and proud, the Confederate flag proclaims a glorious heritage, or an establishment conservative guide to the alt-right, or read the scary descriptions of refugees by Idaho Refugee Agency. The site also has a section of articles under the tag, black crime. How can you separate the man from the website, Liz? Okay, well, for, first of all, the, as I mentioned, the alt-right uh, alt article is not particularly complimentary. Uh, it, spoke, it speaks about racism, it talks about neo-Nazis in, in the organization, and, and certainly not in complimentary terms. The, act, the, the people who actually work for Breitbart have been very critical of the alt-right alt -right movement. Um, <clears throat> I also, I mean, it's... So, and, and I will give you the example of, there, there is, a, uh, a, a, 
series of newspapers out on Long Island where I live. Uh, the guy who runs it is very liberal. The, his uh, editorials are liberal. However, he, he has, prints everything from everybody. And, and this is a business decision that somebody can make that they want to have a controversy sells if people to choose to and, 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 and a lot There's of people a people will people read this newspaper because they do have all opinions there. Right. Okay, but people will say there's a difference between controversy and promoting Matt and you can correct me if I'm wrong, and, and being and, and coming out and saying that you are the platform for the alt right. Do they just report on it or do you think they promote it? Well, I do think there's a danger that they've mainstreamed it and that, that there's a, you know, uh, it's a fine line. The piece, the piece uh, that you're referring to, I think, did try, it was an explainer to conservatives yes. about what the alt-right is. But I also think that it misrepresented it a little bit, uh, tried to make it sound like it's what cool young conservatives are doing, not just what, uh, you know, uh, white nationalists are doing. But look, you know, Steve Bannon runs this site to some degree. He bears responsibility for everything in it, but he didn't write that piece. And you, I'm, I'm willing to bet you could find uh, <laughs> titles from places I've worked and others probably on this panel that they may not agree with 100%. Mm -hmm. I think presidents have a right within, you know, within reason to sort of pick the people they want advising them. And I would also say, I think that we get up in arms every four or eight years over things like this. I remember it wasn't that long ago, our friend Van Jones, who was the green jobs czar or something in the Obama administration, had in his past been a more of a liberal activist, had been some people at his organization were truthers. And Glenn Beck, who was on our air not that long ago, uh, went on a jihad against uh, Van Jones. I think he did 14 episodes attacking him, mm -hmm. run him out of the Obama administration. Van Jones happens to be one of the most, I think, thoughtful liberal commentators and best, you know, sort of uh, analysts that I know. But I think that's what we do. This, I think, we're overblowing this a little bit. You'd be hard-pressed to see Van Jones promoting racism, yeah, I think. It's, or, it's, or it's, no, it's different, with different but respect, it was... Yeah. With all due respect, the analogy just doesn't make any sense because the, 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 the reason that Steve Bannon is so disturbing is because of what Donald Trump did, right? Barack Obama did not take office and then appoint Van Jones after having uh, run, a, you know, run a racist birther uh, campaign. Well, Barack Obama church, did not call for... Sorry, sorry let me... Matt, 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 let me, let me finish. Matt, right Matt, Matt. I didn't, I didn't unfairly. Matt, Matt, let, Matt him let, me, let me finish. Right? right. The, the problem is what Steve Bannon says about Donald Trump, the man who attacked Judge Curiel for being of Mexican descent, the man who falsely claimed that Muslims celebrated 9-11, the man who repeatedly called Elizabeth Warren Pocahontas. This is a man who has done a lot of damage by fanning and inciting bigotry during the campaign. He needs now to do, to repent for that and to publicly try to bring the country together. Pointing Steve Bannon, whose website Breitbart said a lot of those kind of things it makes the situation worse. But Steve what? Bannon, you've got to balance this with Mike Pence is vice president. Uh, Why vice do we president? need to balance bigotry uh, with non-bigotry? Ryan's Priebus, who I think is widely respected as a mainstream conservative and a member of the establishment, is his chief of staff. We're focusing so much on Bannon, who I think is an eccentric, outside-the-box guy. We don't know. He's going to be advising uh, President Trump. I think that's in his purview to, to have There's that a guy. difference yeah, yeah. between being advice. eccentric and, and, and promoting, you know, uh, on your website. It's not my cup of tea. I, I, let me ask you something. Hang on, Liz. Hang on. Matt, I want to ask you something because you're a fair guy and we, we have you on all the time. Um, that analogy that you're making where you said that um, Breitbart normalized is in danger of normalizing. You think they did the alt-right. Don't you think that's the same thing that they may be normalizing that by bringing someone into the administration who, who is said to be the platform for it? Well, I would say a couple of things. One, I think that Bannon and Breitbart in general are nationalists. They are populists. They are against things that I believe in, like free trade. I think that is basically where they live and die. Mm -hmm. I think that on the fringes, they've engaged and flirted with some things that are very unseemly mm -hmm. that I don't like. I'm not convinced. I think that we may be better off having Steve Bannon in the administration than having him running what could become Pravda 
for a Trump administration. Okay. Uh, Everyone stand by. We're going to come back, Liz. I'll let you do that right after the break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Back now with my panel, Liz, you wanted to get the first word here. You, you were taking exception to? Yeah, I was taking exception. We, we just sat here and, and heard Peter Beinart accuse my organization, smear my organization, the Zionist Organization of America, which is the oldest, organiza oldest Zionist organization in the country, which day and night combats anti-Semitism. Uh, day and night wor works uh, if all over the country. The biggest problem that we have right now is Islamic terrorism and, 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 and the SJP and the groups on, on campuses that are running around and screaming death to Jews. Uh, th th this, is, this is the serious, and we, and we have this problem on the streets right now. And, and smears are a real, real problem. Uh, he sat here and smeared my organization the same way that ADL and Mr. Beinart smeared uh, okay. smeared, uh, smeared uh, Mr. Bannon without a single shred of evidence. We've looked at all his emails. But we I, know how he, uh, we, we, okay. we know what he says. Respond. It's not anti-Semitic. But I offered three pieces of specific evidence. First, when Barack Obama in February of this year called Islam a religion of peace, you put out a press release condemning him for that. Secondly, you've had Pamela Geller, who's called Muslim savages, speak for ZOA twice since 2012. And you've had Frank Gaffney, who called Barack Obama the first Muslim president, also speak for the ZOA. So these are facts. This is I, not I, a smear. Okay, these are, they, 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 this is a smear because, first of all, we have many different people speak for us. And, and, and second of all, I, I'm, not even, I'm not familiar with the specific... Uh, Press release February you were, 2016. Okay, and but I would have to see the whole context of it because I'm sure I'm sure that there was a, a, there were a lot of other problems with the statement that Mr. Mr. Uh, that President Obama made. Uh, I, I don't I, think so. I've read it carefully. I would like well, to get Richard's voice in this because Richard, you're you're an expert in all this. And and it, it, while we're responding here, in the aftermath of, of last week's election, we have seen hate crimes, churches being vandalized. We even we even saw a veteran being denied a meal at a Chili's after a Trump supporter challenged his service record. People are asking, how is this happening and why? Yeah, we're seeing white supremacists celebrate Mr. Trump's victory. The incidents are widespread and they're ugly. Uh, we've counted uh, about 500 so far, and I'm sure that's just a small number of the actual incidents. They're anti we've seen a lot of anti-black, anti-Muslim, anti-immigrant things. We've seen it in schools especially, but also in places like Walmart, a Starbucks, people walking on the street being harassed and intimidated, and some neo-Nazis basically telling people, go out and make people of color feel uncomfortable, make them feel unwanted. Those have been calls to action. I would say, Don, I think it's important to note that these things seem to be dying down somewhat, and, and I hope that that's the case. Peter, can Steve Bannon and Breitbart News be both pro-Israel and anti-Semitic? It was a, a question from a viewer who just sent that. Yes, to absolutely. First, I want to make sure, I don't know Steve Bannon. I'm not accusing him of being of an anti being No one is. We're I, I, I think that Breitbart has published articles, for instance, when they called Ann Applebaum uh, a, a, a liberal elitist Jew. Uh, that, that's, that, not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not what they okay, said. I'm sorry, you know what, it's, I'm glad they you called mentioned her a Pol Pol a Pol a Pol Polish, Polish American Jew and it, they, who, who wanted it. it, it uh, I, I, you know, I got the quote, right? Okay, she I have said, a quote. He said, too. hell hath no fury like a Polish, like a Polish Jewish American elitist scorn. Now, it seems to me it is problematic. I mean, and then you can talk. This was it, does seem, it, is, it does seem to me it is problematic to refer to her as Jewish in that regard. Also, when Bill Crystal was called a renegade Jew. Again, I don't think that, I'm not accusing Steve Bannon of being an anti-Semite. I think that Breitbart, as it is trafficked in anti-African, anti-black racism and misogyny, has at times trafficked in anti-Semitism. And it is entirely possible to be a supporter of, of Israel and Zionism and also to be an anti-Semite. A quick example. The Polish government before World War II, which wanted to get rid of its Jews, didn't want them in Poland, was extremely pro-Zionist because it hoped that the Jews would go to Israel. A, for a hundred years, you can find example after example of people who both traffic in anti-Semitism and mm -hmm. also support the state of Israel. It's easy. Hey, Matt, I want to play this. This is a, this <laughs> that, is that, a that's president. A very, that's a very, excuse me. That's a very small, you know. You the, want the, Polish example, yes. the Polish example is, is, is a very so absurd example. Glenn Beck and today, Jerry Falwell today, and, and, the, today and, the supporters, and, and excuse me, today the supporters of Israel are also not anti-Semitic. And the reason they support Israel is because they support the Jewish people. Some of them are anti-Semitic. No, 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 Christian no, no, right no. today, some of them are? Okay. Yes, the, the Christian I right is very in. supportive and not anti-Semitic. I want to play the president speaking today, warning of the rise of crude nationalism. Listen to this. I do believe, separate and apart from any particular election uh, or movement, that 
we are going to have to guard against a rise in a crude sort of nationalism or ethnic identity or tribalism that is built around an us and a them. And I will never apologize for saying that the future of humanity and the future of the world is going to be defined by what we have in common as opposed to those things that separate us and ultimately lead us into conflict. So Matt, he chose his words very carefully, but he's mm -hmm. warning against this. And you, on the campaign trail, uh, the Trump, Donald Trump campaigned on America first, building a wall and so on. What's your reaction? I think President Obama is absolutely right about this. I think his rhetoric has been uh, spot on and, and sort of calming things right now as we have this transition of power. And I think he's also right when he said that Donald Trump is more of a pragmatist than an ideologue. And I'm happy that President Obama is going to be spending a lot of time, hopefully, mentoring Donald Trump in the coming weeks. And Richard, what are you looking for as we, because we've got to run, but what are you looking for in the coming weeks? From, should, what, should the, what should Donald Trump, the president-elect, do to calm this down? Trump should publicly denounce all forms of bigotry and assure the American public that bigots, extremists, members of hate groups, people who have flirted with extremism will have no place in his administration. Unfortunately, he's not off to a good start with Bannon. Yeah. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Coming up, the Democrats have one last hope.